I'm uh, C. Douglas Witherspoon. Uh, I'm a professor in the Department of Ophthalmology, specifically in the retina section of the Ophthalmology Department at UAB at Callahan Eye Hospital. I'm going to talk about temporary keratoprosthesis vitrectomy, primarily for severe ocular injuries. I've been at Callahan Eye Hospital for over 20 years now, and um, it's a dedicated full-service eye hospital that are very rare, uh, probably a dozen or less in the United States now. It's a very valuable asset, a very valuable health care asset to have in our community. We have one of the largest eye tissue banks in America. Generally, the second or third largest eye tissue bank is, I think, where that, that ranks uh, generally. And importantly, it's a net exporting eye tissue bank. In other words, they collect more tissue and process more corneas than are used locally. So they export some of the corneal tissues to other locations. That's important in something like TKP vitrectomy, where we need to be able to perform those procedures on short notice, not wait for a cornea to be able to do the procedures. The effect of all of these um, various facilities that are available in one location like this makes it an ideal place for the treatment of eye trauma, comprehensive treatment of eye trauma. And in particular, the procedure that I'm going to talk about today, temporary keratoprosthesis vitrectomy. Temporary keratoprosthesis vitrectomy, or TKP vitrectomy for short, is one of the most complex eye surgical procedures that's performed. It's specifically geared towards patients who have a damaged cornea that's cloudy, and yet patients who also have damage in the back part of the eye near the retina, or the optic nerve, the back structures of the eye, and who need to have timely surgery for those structures in order to pre preserve or regain vision. The cloudy cornea makes it difficult, if not impossible, to perform normal procedures to, um, uh, towards the retina. The temporary keratoprosthesis then is a way of getting around that issue. This surgery also highlights the strengths and accomplishments of the Callahan Eye Hospital. Uh, it highlights the trauma resources, the capabilities of the hospital. And it's one of our most interesting procedures. It's also where most of our long distance and high profile cases come from to the, to the hospital, not only um, regionally, but across the country and from, from foreign countries as well. One of the unique things about TKP surgery is that it requires two separate surgery teams working together. It also requires an exporting tissue bank for the free availability of corneal tissues to perform the procedures at will. In addition to this, it's necessary to be able to schedule long general anesthesia cases lasting anywhere from two to eight hours, although most cases are about three to four hours in length. It also requires dedicated eye operating rooms and large operating rooms at that to accommodate all the, the people and equipment that are required to perform this kind of surgery. It requires highly trained um, operating room personnel and people who are highly skilled at assisting in both retina surgery and corneal surgery. The most common reason for patients to undergo a temporary keratoprosthesis surgery is an eye injury, and severe eye injuries at that. Usually they're recent eye injuries because there's a golden period of time where patients can be helped with surgery, after which there's usually too much scarring in the eye to allow for effective recovery of vision. And before that time, the surgery is dangerous and sometimes impossible because of poor visualization, uh, increased risk for hemorrhage, and increased inflammation in the eye. Most patients undergo an initial stabilizing procedure locally, their home, by a general ophthalmologist. The patients usually have lacerations of the cornea or the sclera, and those are repaired by a general ophthalmologist in their local area. And after two to four weeks, generally, they're referred to us for consideration of TKP vitrectomy because of a cloudy cornea and, and poor visualization of the posterior structures, including the retina. The conduct of the procedure usually begins with the retina team. The retina team sets the patient's eye up for surgery. Usually, we place an infusion cannula uh, to pressurize the eye and maintain a steady pressure during the surgery. And again, this is after the patient's undergone a primary a repair, a initial repair at home, 
and had adequate recovery from that procedure, usually two or three weeks in that time frame. Following this, the corneal surgery team takes over. They remove the central damaged cornea and they place the temporary keratoprosthesis, prosthesis, which is basically a plastic cornea that's used to take the place of the patient's normal clear cornea during the time that we operate in the back of the eye. So the temporary plastic cornea is placed and we make another switch. The retina team comes back to the operating room and performs what's usually the, the longest part of the procedure, the uh, posterior segment procedure, the retinal repair portion of the procedure. This includes a lot of different um, possible procedures depending on the, the circumstances, but they all have the common goal of reattaching the retina, restoring function, and the, which translates to vision, and prevention of future problems with the retina, future retinal detachment or deterioration of the retina. Some of the specific procedures performed during this stage of the operation include retinal detachment repair, removal of hemorrhage from the vitreous cavity, removal of hemorrhage from underneath the retina, Often there's removal of scar tissue from the surface of the retina, from underneath the retina, and sometimes from other structures in the back part of the eye, including the ciliary body, ciliary body detachments. Laser treatment is usually used for prevention against future tears and detachment, and sometimes sclerobuckling procedures are performed for retinal detachment as well. The vitreous is usually replaced with either a mixture of gas perfluorocarbon liquids or silicone oil at the conclusion of the procedure to support the retina while it heals during the first couple of months. There are other procedures sometimes performed as well. Sometimes there are interocular form bodies that are removed, ciliary body detachments or ciliary body um, uh, clefts are sometimes repaired. Just any uh, damage that we find in the back part of the eye once we can see through the temporary keratoprosthesis. Once we finish the posterior segment uh, portion, the reconstructive portion of the procedure, it's time for the corneal team to return. They remove the temporary keratoprosthesis and they replace that with a human donor corneal transplant, just like a patient who might have a corneal transplant for some other reason. So the artificial plastic cornea is removed. It's replaced with a donor living cornea that comes from the eye tissue bank. And finally, the retina team comes back one last time. We uh, inspect all the incisions to be sure that everything's tightly closed. We're, we check the pressure in the eye. We're sure that whatever we've used to, to replace the vitreous volume is appropriate and that uh, the amounts are appropriate, that everything's in place to put the patient on a good course for recovery. And all that takes usually four hours.